Hello and welcome to the Golden Ribbons Tutorials. We're on yet another infographic tutorial and we're looking at the pencil idea tutorial as seen in the preview. I have my canvas here, resolution is 1700 by 1700. My colors on the right include my logo as usual as well as the icons that I'll be using in this tutorial. Okay, so let's get straight into it. The first thing I'm going to do is going to create the title of this infographic. So I'm going to zoom in, holding control and my scrolling my middle mouse button. Then I'm going to select the Bezier tool. You can go here and select it, or you can press B. Good. Then I'm going to click, hold control to get a straight line. When you hold control, it allows you to move in increments of 15 degrees, or you can pull down for a straight line. So you're going to pull down with control and this, this length is good. I'm going to click to create one more node. Then I'm going to pull down at about 1, 2, 30 degrees, 30, about 45 degrees, no, about 30 degrees. And then I'm going to click and I'll create an arrow as best I can. Click again. And I'm going to create a slight plane here. So I get a shape looking like this. It's looking good. Okay, then. Then I'm going to go into my snap tool, select enable snapping, make sure that I have snap nodes and parser handles and I have snap cost nodes activated. So with this now, I'm going to select B again for the Bezier tool and you notice that the snap node sign comes up. I'm going to click that snap node sign and I'm going to create a shape similar to the one previously, just that the top is flat angle about 30 about 40 30 again and we create the shape here i think we can pull this down slightly hold down alt and put it up to about equal length then i'm going to select this i'm going to press ctrl and d then i'm going to use the invert button here move it to the side and it will snap because we have the snapping tool on Make sure there's no line in between them. That's okay, it doesn't look so bad. Okay, good. Next, we're going to scroll in and I'm going to select all three. Oh, I'm going to select just the outside too, sorry, holding shift. And I'm going to take off the snap tool just temporarily. I'm going to need it again in the future. And I'm going to stretch them in. Good, this looks about right. Uh, let's just separate them with different colors so that we can see them from now. I'm gonna use a gray for this one. I should really have this gray down here, you know, but I don't have it, but let me just add it because I know I'm gonna use it a couple of times. Let's duplicate this, add this gray dropper. Whether I think it's a darker gray. I think it's a darker gray I use in this one. Okay, good. Then in the outside, I'm going to select the blue and then the middle now, I'm going to select this green. So we have all of them together. Okay, this one looks like it didn't sign too rightly. Good. So we have already the hexagonal look of the hexagonal look of the um, pencil right. next we're going to go to the we're going to scroll into the top and we're going to complete the top of the pencil using the bezier tool activate the snap nodes and we're going to create complete the top of the pencil and create the hexagonal wooden section Good. Just follow the nodes, they'll help, they'll snap you together. We're going to use a brown here, about um, this brown looks good. Scroll out. Then we're going to create a circle. Good. And I want this circle to go on top. This circle looks okay. I'm going to duplicate the circle, carry one at the bottom. I'm going to duplicate the circle once. I'm going to duplicate this circle once more. I'm going to squish this circle. This circle is going to be for the lead that's in the middle of the hex hexagon. 
So I'm gonna select that. See we have the lead. Just gonna scrape it down a bit. Good. And I'm gonna hold down Alt and Down button just to small increments to make it look more like it's in the middle. Good. Just save this. Scroll that a bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do next, we're gonna create the tip of this pencil using nodes snap together and I'm going to create it here and snap it right here and complete the path so we have this here I'm going to use the same brown and lower it down then I'm going to get to use this circle and I think I scale scale down the circle holding control and shift I'm gonna give this a, the gray color let's bring it down a bit scroll in to see what we're doing see how it's looking probably need to find it a bit more until the outside boundary box reaches the edges of this shape here and we put it underneath I think I may need to lift this up slightly I'll bring this down okay so we have a pencil we're just going to change this to a blue color duplicate the circle once more duplicate it another time and duplicate one at top I know this this is four duplicate this is three duplicates we're just going to change color so that we can see what we're doing that's the green and we're going to use the gray Good. So with this now, I'm going to select this duplicate, select the gray, holding shift, make sure the two of them are selected. And then I'm going to hold control shift and star. And that's the same thing as going to path and intersection. Good. And then I'm going to duplicate this blue once more. Hold shift to hold the green, control shift and star once more. And that will give me this nice ball good then i'm gonna use my left click draw a box over all of these objects that we just created hit ctrl and g which is the same thing as group you can right click and you can group it's grayed out here for me because i've already grouped then i'm gonna hold ctrl and shift hold down this transformational handle and scroll it down put the pencil here Okay, the first one we're going to be using is Andrine, so I'm going to go to the text tool, you can also press T, and I'm going to type in idea, okay, and I'm going to scroll in a bit, so we see the idea there, my, my kerning is, is heavy, that's why the spaces are so wide, so I'm just going to put them to zero up here looks more like what it was supposed to look like screw it up and this looks good and duplicate press ctrl and a to highlight all of the text and then i'm going to look for my font and drain i don't know if i pronounced it right good i'm going to select d for the color dropper select this green then i'm going to go to my bezier tool you can also select b hold down control for a straight line it's not showing much I'm gonna to go to my fill and stroke and thicken up this line so control shift and F or you can go to object is it object I think it's object fill and stroke is supposed to be at the top sorry object fill and stroke okay so I'm gonna to go to stroke style increase this to five oh, it doesn't seem to be increasing I wonder why it's not increasing. Let's just see if I can give it a color. Okay. So I gave it a color and it increased. All right. And let's bring it down slightly. Next, I'm going to duplicate this text box and I'm going to type in infographic. Hit Ctrl and A to highlight all of it. And we're going to use railway for this one. I'm going to give it a bold railway. Good, so because this represents the eye, we're going to take out this eye for the idea. We're going to take out the 
I for the infographic and that should give us ID and infographic looking really nice. Let's scroll this down slightly. Good, I want this also in black, so I'm gonna, in gray, sorry, so I'm gonna select that gray. I can scroll down even a bit more. Right. Let's increase the idea slightly. And just reduce the size of this line right here. Okay, lastly, to finish the title, we're gonna select this bulb right here. Is it this one? I think so. And I'm gonna put it over here. No, it's not this one. This one, I'm gonna put it over here and select the light screen. X out the fill and stroke and we have our title down slightly okay now we're going to move on to the pencil so I'm going to create a rectangle tool I'm just going to duplicate this one since it's a rectangle already just increase the width of it slightly and I'm going to duplicate this take off the snap for a bit duplicate this three four times sorry and try to get the proportions equal I'm just winging it because this is a tutorial and I have a limited time, but you can take your time and get these to be proportionate. Okay, so the first thing of the pencil I'm going to create is the top. So I'm going to get a circle, hold control and shift and scale up to make sure the proportions are equal. And you notice that we have marching ants going around the circle. We're going to align these marching ants with the rectangle. So if they come and um, line up with the rectangle, then we, we have a the circle is proportioned, right? And we're gonna do and change this a different color so I can show you what's happening. Put this underneath too. We're gonna line the circle up until it reaches the middle handle. See these handles here? Good. So when it reaches the middle handle, we know that we have the circle in a relatively good place. Good. Hold Alt Control, this looks good. Then I'm going to hold Shift, hold the rectangle, hit Control Shift and minus sign, which is the same thing as going to Path and Difference. And we're going to just drag this down. That's gonna give us our world. Good, so on top of this, let's add our world to it and finish this. So I'm gonna duplicate this icon over here. As always, you can get the icons in the blog post. So you download them. We're just gonna scroll this down slightly until it covers a fair amount. And this is fairish. Increase it so slightly above. Okay, I'm just gonna bring it below this. Hold shift, hold the both of them, control shift and intersect. And star, which is the same as intersect. Oh, duplicate it first and then select what's behind it and control shift and intersect and then I'm gonna move this on top to the bottom. This I'm gonna select a green and this one I'm gonna select a darker green to that green. So control shift and, whoops, control shift and F. Take me there and I'm gonna carry this down slightly. Okay, maybe I need to swap the colors a bit. So this, I'm gonna give this, and this one, I'm gonna make the lighter green. I'm gonna give it this, the lighter green. So I'll put it over. Okay, that looks really good. That looks really good. Okay, so we have this here. We're moving okay. Okay. Next thing. We're going to create the triangles that separate the, the boxes. So I'm going to lift this up slightly, get it as possible. And I'm going to create a triangle. Why does it look like that? Oh, there's a piece that wasn't cut off. Okay, let me just cut this piece off. Difference. Okay. Oh, there's more than one piece. Uh, 
difference difference that's a Q difference where is that coming from okay difference okay let's put this back and that looks okay all right then so we're going to create the triangles now and I'm just going to create it with the Bezier tool. So selecting B or going to your Bezier tool on your right, left hand side, I'm just going to create a triangle. Scroll out to see how it goes. Hold control to get the angles right. And this looks about right. I'm going to give this a brown. And in fact, let me just use the same brown up here just for consistency carry it down so that it looks like it has a similar space. I'm going to duplicate this triangle, scroll it in. Then I'm going to flip it, flip tool up top. Then I'm going to hold shift, hold this transformational tool, the horizontal right one, pull across and till we get a triangle looking like a cone-ish. And then bring it down smaller and we can adjust it. I think this is about right. Okay, so for this now, we're going to create the triangles, give it enough space, duplicate it. Good, so the first one we're going to do is we're going to subtract from the top. So I'm going to select both of them and hit Control Shift and minus sign is the same thing as difference. So that same thing as going to path and difference. Good, I'm going to duplicate this once more, move this below, bring this above. Try to put it so that the space between here is the same as in the space between the two triangles. And we're going to control shift and plus, which is the same thing as going to path and union. So we're going to do this on this side too. Starting with our difference. Good, this difference looks okay. Um, give it a slight more. Okay, control shift and minus sign. And then, well, let's just duplicate it first. Control shift and minus sign. And then I'm going to go move this up. So the space is almost the same. Control shift and plus. Good. For this one down here, I'm going to apply the same principle. Duplicate it up here and control shift and minus sign and control shift and plus so we have our pencil good it's starting to take shape let's give these this these segments different colors so you can see what we're playing about with and I want you to be blue, you to be this color blue, and we have our colored segments starting to take form. We're gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna create with the Bezier tool B. We're gonna create our pencil tip. Let's create a shape. Select the two of them, Control Shift and Star, which stands for intersect. Select the gray, and we have our pencil tip. Good. Next, I'm going to quickly make the paper slips on the right hand on the sides of these segments. And let's just take it through. Pa first paper slip is blue. I'm going to put it on this side. Put it underneath too. And try to stretch it out slightly. Okay, duplicate it, carry it down. I'm going to use the green. And then I'm going to duplicate it and carry it on this side. I'm going to use this lighter blue. Good. Make sure it's underneath. Okay, I'm just using my eye for this, but then you can align this so that it's equal on, on every time. Equal on each segment. Let's highlight everything. Move it up slightly. Scroll it down slightly. Okay. We're going to create the little segments on the side. So I'm going to duplicate the paper slip, hold S, squeeze it down with this left horizontal transformational handle, and then I'm going to pull it out. Good. 
Then I'm gonna duplicate this again. Left transformational handle, squeeze it down, duplicate. No, squeeze it down, don't duplicate it, and then carry it across. Let's give it a bit more space. Hold Alt and just arrow it out. All right, good. And I'm just gonna duplicate this and carry it across. And use the dropper tool to drop it in with the same color. Let's zoom in to bring it down. Okay, zoom out, and we have what looks like our bars. Um, probably let's I forgot to duplicate this and carry it up. Okay. Okay. All right, so this is done. We're going to create the shadow and the lights. So, save this, control and S. Always try to make it a habit to save your work continuously using the shortcut so that it becomes second nature because things happen and you don't want to lose your work. So, we've just created a circle with a circle with a shadow with a circle. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the opacity for this circle. Then I'm gonna create the shadows in between the boxes. So I wanna duplicate this carry across, make sure that it's colored with the same color. And then we're gonna to go to the fill and stroke dialog box. Mine's already open. You can find yours at object fill and stroke, or you can right click and go to fill and stroke. I'm going to drag down the lightness value so it's slightly darker in the HSV, Hue, Saturation and Lightness slider. And then uh, make sure that it's underneath. It is. Okay, it is underneath. And that's good. So we're going to duplicate this one. Do the same thing for the blue. I'm going to do the same thing for all three of them. Bring it down. And lastly, duplicate and select the green, bring it down, put it underneath. So the shadows for each are present. Good. Then we're gonna do the little light coming from the tip. For that, we're gonna need our snap tool on, and we're going to set the bezier at the tip, hold down control, and we're going to make a triangle. Good. Then we're going to go down to our color palette and we're going to select a yellow. See, that's good. We're going to activate our gradient tool. You can press G or go down to gradient here. I'm going to press G to activate it. Then I'm going to pull from the bottom and pull. Pull from the bottom, sorry. And pull up so that this node comes down to the edge of the tip and this one goes up to the edge of the box giving a nice ray effect then i'm going to select this and press it one more time to activate the rotation handles and skew handles and i'm going to take this center of rotation this x here i'm going to put it down to the edge of the box right here yeah. This way it's going to rotate off of its pivot. Then I'm going to hold Control and D to duplicate. And I'm gonna put it down. Hold Control and D again, put it up. Hold Control each time so that you're moving it by increments. Good. Or by um, proportional increments. And you will have it. I'm gonna select all of them now. Press Control and G to, du to group them. I'm going to take off the snap tool and rotate. Good. Then we're going to put this underneath. Coming from the pencil tip. And just set this good. And take out the opacity of it of this shadow and put it underneath the shadow. Right. 
So this way, okay. So we have the light rays here. Let's just decrease the opacity of the light rays. We have all of this here. So our pencil, our world is complete. Moving on from this now, we're going to add the pencil stroke. So first I'm gonna to go to my Bezier tool, B. And with that B, I'm going to select ellipse. Make sure that the mode is on create regular Bezier. And we're just going to go and create this pencil stroke. And my pencil stroke started out badly, but let's hope I can finish it well. And it is here. Okay. So we'll scroll it down a bit. And this, as you can imagine, takes some playing until you get what you really want. Uh, I'm going to just keep it as this, just for the sake of time. I'm going to hold down control and then hold my left mouse button, drag over this world, I'm going to put it to the top. So it appears that it's going behind and around. But next I'm going to select this box, drag it in and drag this in also. Good. Next I'm going to draw for this and this is the chalk like pattern that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this and I'm going to press Ctrl and C. Then I'm going to go to the Bezier tool. So now this is on the clipboard. I'm going to go to the Bezier tool and select from clipboard. So this is going to be an elongated form of this pattern of this object. So I'm going to select from here and I'm going to draw it as closely as possible to my original Bezier curve that I created with the elongated ellipse. Okay, so I'm going and drop it. Good. So you have the pattern here. I'm gonna scroll out so that so you can see it. First, I'm gonna X out this, then I'm gonna hit Control, Shift and seven, and that's gonna open up the path effects. You can go to path and go to path effects down here. Good. So with these path effects now, we're going to change the big one to 0 0.5 and we're gonna change the small bezier to four. Good. Put this underneath. Excellent stuff. So all you have to do now is do a bit of positioning with the bigger one. And I'm gonna try and position it a little better. And we are okay, we're kicking, kicking. Perhaps I can bring this to 0 0.4. All right, this looks good at 0 0.4. And we have looking like the pencil stroke. So I'm gonna change this color to green so we can see the two of them. Select both of them with shift, control shift and plus. And that's the same thing as path as union. And that's gonna unify the stroke. Then we're gonna give this stroke gradient. So I'm gonna hit G to activate the gradient tools, pulling up from the bottom. Then I'm gonna hold D and select a lighter gray. Uh, this gray looks good. And we have our infographic and all you have to do now is add text. So we're just gonna spend this rest of the time and add the text to this. But as you can see, this is the format of it. Looking really good. Let's add the rest as best we can. Gonna add this light bulb here, scroll down. And then duplicate, carry it down, duplicate, carry it across. Add D, Control Shift and F, let's put it out, make it lighter. Good, Control Shift and F is for your fill and stroke dialog box once again. 
Deselect the green, create it, make it lighter. Select the blue, make it lighter. Right. And yeah, then I'm gonna duplicate this light bulb, bring it here, stretch it out. Duplicate this light bulb, bring it here, stretch it out. Make sure that it's in line with the other light bulb. Try to make it the same size also. Good. And duplicate this, bring it down. Select this lighter green. Let's zoom in so I get it. Excellent. Good. Next we're gonna add the A, B and C. So it's the same Andrean font, so I'm gonna duplicate this, carry it down. Highlight it, press hold down shift for the caps, create the A, you select button, we're going to choose a white for this A, drag it across, scale it down, and we have our A. Duplicate, bring it down, put it here, and we have our B. Hold shift, create the capital B. And we're going to duplicate this, bring it down, and we have our C, A, B, and C. Good. It's a bit on the large side, but I'm just going to keep it here just for the reference. And last but not least, you just have to add your text to this. I'm just going to get it from my previous one. So I want to screw it into my previous and I'm going to get the text um, one and two. I'll select this one and two, copy. Uh, seems you've got some things mixed up, but that's okay. You get the gist of it. Let's just make these darker and stuff lighter. Okay, so these shadows. Control and V, carry these up. Good points and titles, duplicate it, bring it down to each one of them. And um, I'm just going to have to drag this down a bit. should be it I'm just going to align this to the left hand side right hand side sorry point title point title and duplicate these and put them over here okay scroll out and that is uh, infographic I think we have one more thing we can do Add the world in the background and I use this gray right here and put it in the background and that's it so we have a pencil idea infographic I hope you learned something we covered a couple of complex techniques in this one. I'll make sure I list them in my blog post. As always, you can go and find the hexadecimal colors there as well as the icons. Also, I'll include this chalk pattern for you to use also for your pencil stroke. And I, whoa, ha, huh. it is not complete. This whole tutorial is a complete failure unless the logo is there so ah, i knew something was missing the logo so we have our logo right here good my logo not your logo all right so hope you enjoyed the tutorial i'll see you later just take care of yourselves until then get up and design a new dawn later